Okay, I'm doing a have that I have not review. This is the first time I'm doing one. I just got an opportunity to see this episode, this week's episode this morning. So now I'm doing my review. So, this week's episode picks up where the last episode left off. Where we saw Candace being shot. Okay, so, and we see that she was not shot. She's on the ground with this bag over her head and she's crying. She gets this bag off her head. And she proceeds to walk out of these woods that these crazy Malone brothers do to shoot her. She exits from there and then we go to the Cryer Mansion where Jim is bringing Amanda home. Amanda doesn't want to be there. Kathy's like, I'm glad you're here. And Amanda's like, oh, I'm, I bet you are being all sarcastic and stuff. Amanda's over the top these days. It's fun, but she's very over the top. And so Catherine asks, uh, Jim about this gun that Amanda had and um, Jim says well she says it was a toy and um, uh, Catherine asks him are you sure did you check her purse and Jim doesn't like this because he's supposed to be this big know-it-all so sharp and smart and all this and he's really not that smart when it comes to some things and um, so he snaps back at Catherine where's Wyatt and Catherine said he's asleep and he's like oh, are you sure Catherine's like, go to hell. And she walks off. And so we switch to the scene with Jeffrey and this girl. This girl that wouldn't stop talking when they went on a date in the last episode. And so she's very persistent about coming up to his place. She sends the cab away, which was what Jeffrey was going to have send her home. And um, she gets up there in his place and she starts pulling his clothes off and asking if he has any porn and he's very resistant he's like I'm not that kind of guy and I think Veronica Davis threw a marching orders on what to do to Jeff because no woman would be stupid enough to believe that Jeffrey was straight and you want to know why because he was way too resistant to her pulling his clothes off uh, there aren't many, that many straight dudes that would be that resistant to a woman pulling their clothes off. Not unless she looks really, really bad, and this girl did not look bad at all. So, she should have known that, but I think Veronica gave her marching orders on what to do. So she pushes him on the bed and just proceeds to take it. Jeffrey looks depressed as all get out. A very, very pained expression on his face. He looks like he's being assaulted. And okay, and so from there, we um, see Candace arriving at her apartment building. And she, of course, she has no keys or anything. So she has to uh, call the building manager through the intercom. So he comes down and opens the door and says, If you were going to move, why didn't you tell me? And Candace doesn't know what he's talking about. When he lets her into the apartment, she, we see that it's stripped bare. Everything is gone. Jim has cleaned everything out of that apartment. Candace has nothing but what she is wearing. And obviously this is really going to ratchet up her anger level. He's already tried to kill her. Now he's taking everything from her. She's going to get him. Trust. But anyway, next thing we see is Quincy arrives in the hood, and the gang isn't feeling him because they pull all these guns on him. He just gets a big welcome with guns. And he's asking where Candy is, as he likes to call her. And Warlock, the leader of the gang, is like, she's not about this life anymore. She's not down here anymore. She took up with some judge who was taking care of her. And Quincy wants to know where she is and all that, but, you know, Warlock's not having it, and Quincy doesn't get anything from him but the cold shoulder and the evil eye. And, of course, guns pointed at him. So, from there, we, um, I believe that we go back to Jeffrey. Jeffrey is like... Uh, in bed with this girl after they did the deed looking depressed as heck so he goes and he calls Landon and Landon's like 
<laughs> he's like all kind of happy that Jeffrey's calling him at one in the morning. But it ain't what Landon thinks it's for. Uh, Jeffrey explains what happened and he wants to meet Landon at the hotel bar. And Landon says, okay, we can do that. And so we go to the Pryor Mansion where Amanda is. And Amanda's doing all her ballet turns and stuff with this gun, just acting a fool. And then she proceeds to play eeny, meeny, miny, moe by pointing the gun at her mother, her brother, and herself. Jim comes upstairs when she's lurking in the hallway. He wants to know why she's lurking in the hallway. And she's like, I wanted to get some water. And he said, okay, let's go get some water. And she said, I already have. And Jim's like, I was in the kitchen. I didn't see you, Amanda. I had some in the bathroom. This is exactly how she talks. <laughs> and he's like, oh, okay. And at some point, she ends up saying, I love you, Mo. And he's like, what? What are you talking about? And she's like, I said, I gotta go. She's just acting really crazy. And Jim knows she's crazy because he's a little bit, like, taken aback by her. You can tell that he's taken aback by her. And she um, asks him to go to his room first and then she goes to hers because she's still hiding this gun behind her back. And he never sees the gun. The gun that was supposed to be a toy. The toy that got into the house. Yeah, Jim's real bright. So after that, um, we transition back to... I might be doing this out of order, but I'm trying to get everything in order to have much as possible. We transition back to Jeffrey. So he meets up with Landon, and Landon's like, you didn't commit a crime, did you? Because the only way I'd be hiding you is if we were exchanging sexual favors. <laughs> and Jeffrey gives him this look like, child, please. And so anyway, Jeffrey details what happened with this girl. And, um, and Landon asks him how it was, and asks him if he's bisexual. And he's like, well, the only way I could keep it up is if I was thinking about a guy. And Landon just saw like, <laughs> was it me? And I'm like, dude, it wasn't him. It wasn't him. And Jeffrey said no. And Landon wants to know who it was. And Jeffrey does not say who it was. He says it's not important. But we know who it was. It's a certain somebody that committed a double hit and run. Okay. And so... Jeffrey uh, admits that he did this unprotected and Landon gives him a speech like about how he shouldn't be doing that unprotected and how he should not, you know, just spiral into a cycle pretending to be something he's not doing the down low and all that. And just, you know, getting caught up in all that mess. And I think Tyler Perry put that in there trying to get a message out to the black community where a lot of this download goes on and I think that was a good message for him to put in there but that aside um, uh, Jeffrey um, Jeffrey doesn't want to go back to his place because the girl is still there so Landon invites him up and Jeffrey's like well, I don't want to have sex and Landon's like are you kidding me you just had unprotected sex with the girl I'm not going to have sex with you hell well he didn't say that but he might as well <laughs> <laughs> okay. And I believe where we transition to next was... Let me look here. Okay, so we go to Hannah and Benny now. And Hannah and Benny are... Um, they're just making small talk, bantering back and forth. And it comes out that Hannah quit her job. And Benny's like, you needed that job. We need money coming in. And so that was a perfect sort of like segue into this billing department person coming in. And this woman's like smiling all the time, grinning like the Cheshire Cat. Like, oh, well, you need to pay your bill before we discharge you. It's $126,000 and such and such. And I was like, you're telling this broke woman she needs to pay 126 k And they're doing it with a smile. I'm like, come on, are you crazy? And this, and I, this is, this seems, seem like a, 
small scene because the doctor comes up immediately and like this well her bill's been covered Catherine Cryer has it covered and Hannah's like oh, thank you Jesus <laughs> she has this face like that's what she was thinking and so that bill is covered and the billing department person goes on about her merry way and just then the DA and the cop comes up the cop working on the um the hit and run case they come they walk up to Hannah and they want to know if she's going to testify and Hannah seems a little bit skittish about testifying she says that she will but it seems like there may be something holding her back and that 126k is what's holding her back she knows she can't afford that and she don't want Catherine going back on her word about that or you know trying to recoup that money from her Ain't no way Tana can afford that big old bill. Especially now, especially now that she's unemployed. And um and she so Hannah asked to talk to Detective Byron. And wow. They don't know nothing about no Detective Byron. Neither the DA or the detective knows. And I knew the detective Byron was on Jim's payroll, but I thought he was just the cop that Jim had on the tape. This dude ain't even working on the force, apparently. So that was a big revelation for Hannah right there. And let me see where else we are at with this. Oh, okay, um, Veronica stops by the Cryer Mansion. Catherine and Veronica's all gussied up. She's gonna go surprise David for breakfast. She's all gussied up, like ready to roll, ready to make things right with her husband and all that. And so her and Catherine have a little conversation, and um, and uh, Catherine asks if they're still on for dinner tonight, and she said Veronica says yes, and she said I'll have Jeffrey bring his date and. And Veronica's like, I mean, Catherine's like, date? And she, and, and she is like, I think Veronica said something, yes, she's a lovely girl or whatever. And Catherine's like, oh, now you know you're full of it. Jeffrey don't want no girl. You can see from Catherine's face. And once Veronica leaves, um, Catherine's like, she? And she kind of like shrugs like, um, okay. She knows her friend is delusional, but hey, can't really say much to your friends when they're that delusional. Okay, and so can the next scene is Candace arrives back in her hood. She uh, meets with Warlock. Warlock obviously has a lot of love for her, because she asks for 5K, and bam, she's got it just like that. And then she says she wants Jim Pryor to be teased taught lessons in the hood and Warlock's like whoa 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 back up now I don't want that kind of heat coming down on my operation and Warlock uh, is like the hood godfather or whatever well, that's what it seems like and then Han Candace says I'm gonna get you a hundred K and he comes around after that and where she gonna get a hundred K from I don't know She's got something up her sleeve, and we'll just have to see what that something is. And, um, she gets her money. Oh, and he tells her that Benny's alive, because she asked if they had Benny's funeral. So she found out that Benny's alive. And uh, Hannah's going to be throwing a surprise party for him, so that was around the neighborhood, I guess. And Warlock let her know that. And, um, so we're coming around to the end of the episode, and so, uh, uh, Jeffrey wakes up in uh, Landon's hotel room and uh, his phone has been blowing up this girl's been calling him like non-stop throughout the morning and Landon just said well you just need to tell her the truth and uh, obviously Jeffrey is not really feeling telling any kind of truth now because Veronica's got that car already. okay and so we go and we see um Maggie and David and Maggie comes over and she apologizes for throwing herself at David. She thought he was like Jim, a whore 
but obviously David was not a whore because he turned her down flat. Although he did think about engaging in some slut activity because he did look at that adjoining door. Okay, and so they banter on and she asked him how he met Jim and how they became friends and all that. And then she asked him about Veronica and um, how he met her. And he said he met her in law school and that she's always been a pistol. And Maggie proceeds to say, well, she's a double barrel shotgun. And David's like, Maggie, she's not. And um, David, like, wants to believe that Veronica's not as bad as some, some other people see her, but she really is that bad. Blackmail her son with prison time. That's pretty bad. And so they have their conversation and they leave the hotel room. And guess what happens? Veronica just happens to be walking up to the door as David and Matt were leaving the hotel room. And her face is like, she's mad. She doesn't say a word at first. And David's like, I can explain it. It's not what it was saying. And Maggie says something. And that's what gets a word for Veronica. And she's like, B, you don't have nothing to say to me. And, and right then, Jeffrey and Landon come out of the hotel room right across from David. And she's looking at them like, what is going on here? The Veronica's like in the middle of all this drama. She don't know what's going on. She don't know if her husband has messed with this Maggie. She don't know if her son has messed with this lamp. So that was the cliffhanger. And so next week, we're really going to see some of this. We'll, we really should see some really good scenes um, wrapping up this cliffhanger. Because we're moving fast towards uh, the season finale, which will be in a couple of more episodes. So I'm going to be reviewing those episodes too, and I hope you will check out my videos doing that. So uh, this is my first review. I hope I did a good job, and thank you for watching. Deuces.